Hi everybody, this is Kate Haley. I'm a portrait and travel photographer based in Seattle, Washington. And I'm super excited to talk about the new Lens Baby Obscura lens. Look at how cute and small it is. This is the pancake version. It's a 16 millimeter focal length, which means nice and super wide for things like architecture, landscape, cityscapes, urban landscapes. And that is a lot of what I've been doing with this lens while I've had it to play around with. I've also done a little bit of light painting and hopefully I'll have time to talk about that. But what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the experience of working with this lens and how I've used it. One of the things that I love about Lens Baby Gear in general is it does really truly push me to try things differently. Um, whether it's the lenses or things like the Omni filter system, as soon as I attach that lens or pull out those crystals, I just start playing around and looking at things a little bit differently. So I love that about Lens Baby. Um, for whatever reason, that's how it works for me. It's just how I roll, I guess. Um, but talking a little bit more specifically about the Obscura, uh, as someone who has used pinhole cameras off and on for years, I was super excited to try this out. And I definitely felt like as soon as I put the lens on and turned it on and started playing around with settings, I was like, this feels familiar and I'm having fun. So I just was excited. I um, took this little guy out to Seattle Center um, where the Space Needle is and the Museum of Pop Culture and also Pike Place Market and the Seattle Waterfront. So kind of some of like the views that are seen the most in the city, but through this lens. And that is what I think, again, you know, I just start to look at things a little bit differently and experiment. And so we'll take a look at those photos. I wanna just take a moment to kind of show some examples of how F22 versus 45 versus 90 look. Those are gonna be your aperture options on the pancake lens. The optic swap version will be different numbers, but similar effect, okay? Um, so at F22, you're gonna find the scene is a little bit foggier, a little bit moodier. Everything is gonna be kind of soft. Um, I'm looking forward to the opportunity on a foggy day to really try that because I think on a foggy day with F22, that's going to look super, super cool and moody and dramatic and I'm going to love it. Um, F45 is going to show you a little less of the glow and a little bit more of the detail. And then F90 is going to start to show you more of the detail, but there's still this softness to it. There's still this like really analog look to it. So, so much fun. Now, when we think more about those numbers, what does that mean for our other settings? So we're taking tons of light away because the opening is so tiny. So we have to make adjustments other places. Do I want to be my ISO? How slow do I want that shutter speed to be? So for most of my images, I ended up using 400 to 800 ISO. Like I said, we've had a lot of sunny days here in Seattle for the past month or so, and those were the numbers that I was comfortable with. And believe it or not, some of those numbers meant I was still shooting at like a tenth of a second or half a second or maybe one second. So it was still slowing down a lot. Now for me, I love adding movement into a still image. Maybe someone walking into the scene or a car driving through, creating light trails or a train coming through the scene. So those slightly slower shutter speeds handheld can be interesting. I can get enough of my subject in focus, but then I can add in some motion blur. So that's the thing that I tried on several, several photographs. The other thing that you'll might want to consider doing is probably using a tripod, right? Um, if the shutter speed is too slow and you're worried about losing detail in the scene because of camera shake, yeah, da, 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 we don't want to do that too much. We want things to be able to be represented, right? We wanna be able to show that space, the space needle, people recognize it. But if it's a little bit blurry, that could be interesting. If it's a little bit soft, that could be interesting. So it's just an idea to try and get a little bit creative, right? So a tripod could be super helpful. Um, one of the things I love is like the uh, Gorilla Pod by Joby because I can get a small one. This setup is pretty small, so I can get their like 50 or $60 version and that's sturdy enough to hold this kit and I'm not worried about things falling over. Um, and it also fits in a smaller bag and all that good stuff. But tripod may be your friend. 
One other technique to play around with the slower shutter speeds is something called ICM or intentional camera movement. And that means while the shutter is open, you might move up and down or left or right or do a circle or move in or away from your subject while the shutter is open. So that's another technique that you could play around with that gets a little bit more creative. All right, so those are some ideas on playing around with those slower shutter speeds or maybe needing to move your ISO up. So just kind of play around with those settings and find the configuration that works best for you and the image that you're trying to create. One to two more quick tips before I let you go. Um, one is please clean your sensor before you start using this lens. When we take that much light away, if we go to F90 or F141, um, depending on which lens you have, you're taking away so much light. All the light goes away, maybe not all, but a teeny, just a teeny opening, so much light gone. What happens also when you take that much light away is all of the dust on your sensor is now visible. <laughs> so do yourself a favor, get your camera serviced or clean your sensor if you're comfortable doing that on your own. It is quick and easy. I clean my own sensor. It's super easy to do. You just be careful. And um, even I who have cleaned my own sensor, um, there's still stuff on there. So I spend a little bit of time in Lightroom and Photoshop taking a few things out, but it's better than like taking a hundred things out. So clean your sensor before you go super slow with this lens, okay? One more quick tip is if this is your first lens baby, or maybe you just got a new mirrorless camera or a new camera in general, and you put that lens on and you turn it on and the shutter won't fire, guess what? You just need to go into your menu and enable something called um, shoot without lens. Now that's what it's called on my menu system. The wording might be a little bit different on yours, but just go to your manual or do a quick search on the internet for your camera model and that phrase, and you should be able to fairly quickly find where that is in your camera. The reason why you need to do this is there aren't electronics passing information through the lens to the camera. So the camera doesn't know that there's a lens attached. So that's why we need to tell it, shoot without lens, so we can now take photos. All right, there's a few tips to get you started with your new Obscura lens. If you have any questions, post those in the comments and have a great day.